So welcome, John. Glad to have you here. Thank you, Mark. I'm glad to be here. I'm here with John Nagy, director of Reed Hurst Nagy Chartered Professional Accountants in Richmond, uh, RHN, um, large accounting firm in Richmond. And John, the reason I wanted to get you on here today, obviously, like yourself, I have a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs as clients, and uh, you know we're in uncharted territory right now, and they're wondering what's the heck's up, um, what kind of support are we getting, and how does it work? So maybe I'll kind of leave it with you, and you sort of uh, run through it. Okay, thanks, Mark. So basically, in my view, there's three main programs that are being presented by the government to deal with the COVID uh, crisis. Um, the, the big one um, is, of course, the 75% wage rebate, which I'll get to in a moment. But we'll start off with uh, one of the smaller programs, which is the Canada Emergency Business Account. And essentially, that's a $40,000 interest-free loan that might be available to you uh, if you're um, if you've paid between fifty and um, fifty thousand and a million dollars in total payroll in 2019. This is a forty thousand dollar interest-free loan available through your bank, and if you repay it by December 31st of 2022, you'll get a forgiveness of 25 percent up to a maximum of $10,000. So it's a pretty good program. Uh, it's very limited in the um, scope because it's only if you've had payroll of 50,000 to a million dollars. So, so, so payroll, John, would be uh, even a single business owner who's got himself on payroll and he's paying himself 50,000 a year? Absolutely. And this Absolutely. is basically free money in essence, for two years, interest-free, and then you got a benefit if you're going to pay it back within that uh, time frame. Right, and if you don't pay it back, obviously it'll start to accrue interest, and you will lose the ten thousand um, dollar free money. But absolutely, it's it's for small, true small businesses. Okay, great. Okay, so that's one. Excellent. Okay. Uh, then the first announcement that the government uh, made initially was. Uh, a 10% temporary wage subsidy program. And it didn't look all that wonderful, but there are still some uh, opportunities available there for certain businesses. Um, the, sub the subsidy of 10% is equal to 10% uh, of wages paid during a three-month period starting uh, March 18th. The subsidy is a maximum of $1,375 per employee, which is the equivalent of roughly a $55,000 annual salary. Yeah, so it's a subsidy of 10% of um, wages paid to an employee, up to $1,375 per employee. And it's only available to Canadian-controlled private corporations that have a small business deduction. So uh, that's a technical point. Most small corporations are eligible for that if they're operating a business. And um, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's also available to individuals who are self-employed, partnerships, uh, not-for-profit entities, and registered charities. The program, and the reason I say it's got some opportunities is that it's based, the, the $1,375 per employee is based on the, the most number of employees you might have during the, the period that it's available. So if you had um, employees in late March and you had 15 employees, you'd be entitled to $1,375 per employee on future payroll, even if you go down to three or four employees. So there, there are some businesses such as restaurants, for example, who have gone from maybe 20 or 30 employees at the end of March down to two or three in the kitchen and a couple up front handing out uh, takeout orders. And this might provide them with some uh, funding. Relief, yeah. Yeah, relief. It is not a cash grant. The way it works is that the the benefit is deducted from your payroll deductions that you have to send in to the government 
on behalf of your employees. And it's only deductible from the income tax part of that, not the CPP and EI. But if you can't use it all uh, because you don't have many employees and therefore don't have a big uh, payroll deduction, you can carry it forward um, and use it when you do get back up and running and have employees that are again uh, subject to the payroll deductions. Right. Okay. So it's it is it does have uh, some benefit opportunities. Okay. So let's switch over now to that. 75 percent the big one yeah so this is the big one uh the, the government announced this about a week after the first 10 percent was uh, provided because uh there was so much pushback people saying that's not going to do anything it's not going to help i don't i don't have employees i don't have payroll deductions and 10 percent isn't going to help me keep employees so they came up with a, a proposal for what's called the canada emergency wage subsidy uh, Qs, we're calling it. Um, we've come up with a whole bunch of new acronyms as a result of this. Um, so initially it was proposed as a 75% wage subsidy, um, but you needed to have a 30% reduction in gross revenues from the prior year in March. And of course they quickly, or at least everybody else quickly realized that there were a lot of companies that weren't going to be able to utilize that for various reasons. Yeah. Um, in particular, um, companies that were startup phase or that um, have ongoing contracts that they're finishing off in March, but have no work in April or May. So there's a lot of variables of, of reasons why it wasn't going to work for a lot of businesses. So um, on the 7th, I believe, yeah, on the 7th, they announced some modifications to that plan and um, understand that none of this has been approved by the legislation yet. Um, so we still don't have the law, but um, I'll give you an update of based on what we know at this moment with regards to this program. Um, the 30% uh, reduction in revenue has been reduced to 15% in March because the government also realized that uh, they had only announced this halfway through March. So a lot of companies only had half a month's revenue um, to be able to compare and it. It just didn't work, the math didn't work. So they're allowing a 15% revenue from the previous year in a revenue decline in March and then they will look at 30% in April and May as well. Additionally, because of seasonal businesses and other reasons, they also said that if, if the previous March didn't work for you in terms of determining whether you actually had a revenue decline, then you could use the, uh, your average revenues in January and February instead of the prior year's March. And, so, and, are we, and are they having to reapply every month or is it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's an annual app. It's a monthly application. Right. Okay. So just as an example, I have a client uh, who owned a couple of McDonald's restaurants on the West coast, acquired four and sold two. So now he had four McDonald's restaurants. Right. So last March though, he only had two. Now he has four. And obviously, so the 30% decline in the first month, at least, wasn't going to work for him. Second month, yes, because he's down to drive through. But um, so those are the types of issues that they've come up with. And the, the government appears to be listening to those issues. Right. So, so go ahead. Well, my question would be, what about the business who has had to close down because they have no revenue? Mm -hmm. um, having a 75% wage subsidy or hiring employees back, is there really, you know, why would I hire my employees back and get paid 75%? I still have to subsidize 25% and I've got no income. That's absolutely true. And they understand that that's an issue. And they, I think they also understand that people that have no revenue whatsoever and no expectation of revenue are going to be very challenged by this. 
the concept is that if you're in a business that has highly skilled, trained employees, trained in your business, um, it, you may be willing to pay the 25% just to keep them on your payroll so that they come back after this is all over. Or at least your revenue can cover that 25% exactly. difference. Exactly, yeah. You know, regardless and, of the fact that it's dropped. Right, and you can combine this with the, if you're uh, within the right parameters, you could actually borrow the money under that previous program we talked about, the $40,000, which would allow you to fund that um, 25%. Right. So now there are some caveats to the numbers. Um, firstly, the maximum benefit is $847 per week, which works out to about uh, a payroll a salary of about $1,128 a week. So essentially, you're talking about a cap for $4,400 roughly a month, um, and that was a targeted number. So you're talking about a gross uh, annual around close to 60 grand. Yeah, $58,000, 58, I yeah, think, was right. the number they picked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. it's, not a, it's, it's certainly not high-end staff, but it's not, um, not a low number either. Yeah, for sure. It's and not your minimum for, wage. For, right, for and it, it's certainly more than they would get if they were on EI. Mm -hmm. So if you're paying them 1200 bucks a week, um, that's certainly more than they would get if they were applying for either the CERB or ordinary uh, employment insurance, so even if they're not working. Right, so, and just to touch on that part of it, out of the move away from the business, hasn't the EI part now converted to the 2000 emergency response? Essentially, yes. It's uh, if, if it's better for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. Yeah, so obviously, for most people, it probably will be because the EI benefit is, is Max quite is low. Max is at 480 or something like that. or Something like around that. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not yeah. as familiar with the EI side because I don't, most yeah. of my clients aren't on EI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I can appreciate that, and that's a good thing. Um, okay, yeah. no, that, that, that's great uh, information. I, I think the key thing here, I'm just wondering how, can you, could the 75 and the, and the 10 be run together in any way? No, they've made it clear that if you, uh, I have actually advised a few clients already that they should consider getting the 10 right away because it'll help with immediate cash flow on their payroll deductions. But the 10%, if you claim it, will be deducted from the 75% if you get it in the future. Okay. okay. So... Uh, but from my perspective, if you've got a payroll deduction coming up uh, that's due on the 15th of April and mm -hmm. you're, you're in a position to get a 10% break on a portion of that, might be worthwhile to do that right now, even though you might lose, you'll have to essentially repay it to the 75% subsidy down the road. Right. And, and also, maybe you can confirm this, but what I understand is at this point, it's they're relying on people telling the full truth. They're not checking things at this point because everything's rushed and we got to get it done. And if you're, if you're saying you've, you know, you've, you qualify, then we believe you, you've lost uh, 15%. Absolutely. It's all based on, um, on everybody's goodwill right. and they will be, uh, the audit department at CRA will be uh, pretty busy after this is all over. Um, checking up to make sure that that payroll actually occurred. Right. And, that the, and I think that the, even uh, Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Morneau made it clear that they would be coming after bad actors. And, they yeah, and I think it's more about the, the, the speed. I'm sort of talking about the speed end of it. Like they're not looking to for confirmation oh, right, right now. It's more about you just say yes and then boom, you, you're in there into the next portal type thing. Right. So the 10% there's... Uh, there isn't actually even a process for applying for it. You just deduct it from your remittance and you have to maintain the calculations for future audit purposes. So right. you just calculate how much the deduction is and take it off the remittance and that's the end of it. Because 
when you send in payroll deductions to the government, they don't question them. You just send them in. Right. Um, the the bigger amount, the the Qs, that one will be an application process, and it will um, require you to input some information. But we have no idea what that looks like yet. I will say that uh, for the um, for the loan from the bank, I did follow. Uh, so the forty thousand. The forty thousand. Okay. I had somebody apply for that, and I watched the application process. It was pretty simple. The only thing that they had to do, uh, to, and this was for the bank's satisfaction, was provide details of their twenty nineteen payroll information. Okay. And that's something obviously that they will be auditing to mm -hmm. make sure that you didn't lie when when this is all done. So similarly here, the um, the cues is going to be based on 75% of payroll. So you better have payroll records that support the amount that you claimed as a rebate. Right, right, right. Okay, no, that's great uh, information. John, I got to thank you. This is great info. Um, I'm sure a lot of the business owners, uh, at least the ones I've been speaking to, are as confused as most because, <laughs> you know, this... Uh, this uh, target has been moving every day. So hopefully sure. um, this is going to be great info and I will get it out ASAP and I really appreciate you taking the time.